Hi, this is Deborah Atkinson, the author of You Still Got It, Girl, and the host of the Flipping 50 TV show. And I want to point out a couple of things that are non-exercise related that are really important, almost as important as the core work you might be doing or the back stretches you might be doing that are contributing potentially to your back pain. And here they are. So I'll see this often standing and I want to go and tell people, don't do that. But I want you to pull out your phone as soon as you're done and look and see if you find pictures of yourself when you see your full body tending to do this in your standing position. So if you do this, you might not recognize it, but notice the difference between my knees now and my knees if I unlock them and slightly bent. Of course, which looks really different. So you don't have to go here. In fact, that would be weird, but we want you really at neutral. So what happens when you go back? It's really subtle, but when those knees hyperextend and you lock them out, it happens most when you do it with both legs at the same time. But it can also happen when we're doing one of these, right where we're in one hip and just kind of popping it out with a little attitude. Or if you're like me, I do this all the time. If I'm standing in line at work and it's just kind of shifting here, shifting there, impatiently waiting, catch yourself doing it. There's a lot more pressure on your lower back because whatever happens with one joint causes a domino effect with the ones above and below it. In this case, we're concerned up here. So if you hyperextend your knees, do you see what's happening just here? So if I let this go and I'm not aware, I know what's happening, so it's really hard for me to let this go. But if I hyperextend there, this joint wants to have an equal and opposite reaction and it tends to go the other way kind of letting the abdominals go slack, putting a lot of pressure right here on the small of your back. So by simply unlocking, what happens all of a sudden is that those hips come back into neutral. Now they're not just locking into their position. You're actually now more aware that you've got to hold, even if you're not thinking about it consciously, there is more going on in here. So what I'd love for you to do is to go to that next step and really think about what is neutral. Here's how I would describe it. Think about the bottom of your rib, your rib cage here, the bottom of that rib cage running all the way around you, parallel to the ground. Now put your hands on your hips. That bucket should run around parallel to the floor as well and the space between them should be even in front and in back. That means you're in neutral. If I'm here hyperextended, the space between my ribs and hips in back is gonna be much closer and this is gonna be much more open. If, and there are few of you that are like this, you stand like this, John Wayne posture really tilted, this is closer together than this is. Your goal is to unlock those knees become aware of that so that you protect your back. By doing that, the other 16 hours a day when you're not exercising, doing core work, or stretching your back, you actually may also be helping yourself get flatter abs because they're gonna be on and activated a little bit more, but you're also helping yourself prevent lower back pain and soreness just from that passive position that they're pulled into. So soften those knees. And here's one reminder that'll help you do it. If you're here and you're in parallel, so just standing there so you can see it, try and stagger your stance. If you ever catch yourself just standing, waiting in line at the grocery store or waiting in line at the bank for some reason, stagger your stance and shift your weight so you have a little bit more on that forward foot. It's a little secret that models use or singers who have to stand on stage for a long period of time so that they don't, with nerves going on as well, get off balance or tend to lock their knees, which can make people tend to pass out. That's what they worry about. But in your case, we're worried about the pressure on your lower back and this will help. So just change it up once in a while and do that instead of kind of shifting hip to hip and we'll all be a little bit better off. One more tip to protect your lower back. When you're doing any lifting overhead, you wanna make sure that if you're doing, say, tricep presses right here in a standing position, that you don't forget the work is not just here. If you're doing this in a standing position, the same rules apply. And oftentimes, I'll see this in the gym for the last 32 years, people will come up and have excellent form right here, be making great strength gains, but 
they're doing this. They've locked those knees and they're forgetting that engaging that core is really important, not just because that's a core exercise too, if you're paying attention, but it also releases the tension in the small of your back. So be thinking about whether you can do that. And if not, you may want to do those exercises in a seated position until you have a little bit better control and you can concentrate on the working muscles, the core and the legs and what all those parts are doing. Just take focus right where you need it. So those are your tips for preventing lower back pain and or fatigue and also increasing your abdominal strength and the potential to have flat abs without single crunches or sit-ups or doing any core exercises whatsoever.